Hello everyone, Dr. Stillman here with Clark Engelbert. We are excited today to talk to people about minerals. Minerals have become maybe my favorite thing to manipulate in clinical practice because you get out of control, out of this world, over the top results. I actually kind of feel bad for people who don't use minerals in clinical practice. It must make helping people so hard. It's an Clark, uphill battle. It's an uphill for, battle. Already. Thanks for being here today. Yeah. yeah, thank you for having me, Doc. Uh, yeah, but you know, it is an uphill battle uh, dealing with uh, chronic conditions in patients and clients. And if you're not using minerals, if you're not using them strategically, really with a hair tissue mineral analysis and with the understanding of how they interact, that's really the key to using minerals to get big results with clients, with yourself, with your family, with your friends, um, you know, so that you can kind of be king of the hill and, um, yeah, you know, feel, feel and look your best. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, hopefully we'll get into today a lot of the details of those, uh, those concepts or those ideas, but yeah, that's really understanding how to use a hair test, um, you know, strategically, and, and with a lot of these uh, different conceptual frameworks, the interactions, the idea that the minerals exist in a system, all of these things really inform the course that we're going to be putting out for everyone. And um, we're also going to be covering some myths, some legends, and some very bad memes about minerals. I can't wait. For I want to hear the legends part. I didn't, I didn't. Know. <laughs> legends. <laughs> Without further ado. Okay. Yeah. Secrets of hair tissue analysis. Clark Engelbert, Dr. Stillman. All right. So what we're going to talk about, what are minerals? Why do they matter? What is hair tissue mineral analysis? Why can't we just replace minerals in the body and make people better? Newsflash, you are not as simple as a car, even though I love using car analogies. Mm -hmm. You can't just add more oil to the oil pan. You can't just add more, you know, windshield wiper fluid to the windshield wiper thing. You need these things to be in balance. Inconvenient truth, but it is. And what are most people getting wrong about hair tissue mineral analysis in our modern world, including those who talk about basically either hair tissue mineral analysis or minerals in general? Hmm. All right. So who am I? I'm a general practitioner. I'm a medical doctor. I specialize in functional and integrated medicine. I've been featured by Ben Greenfield, Mind Body Green, Dr. Joe Mercola, many, many more. If you want to know more about me, check out my podcast, subscribe to my YouTube channel, watch my videos. You can find out a lot about me and what I do through that. And I now run a 99% virtual practice here in the lovely free state of Florida. Clark? Yes. Uh, my name is Clark Engelbert. I'm the owner and CEO of Nutritional Analytics, which is a company that specializes in using hair tissue mineral analysis to uh, set up healing protocols for people. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be featured in the documentary Heavy by Dr. Winnie Myers, which is coming out later this year. She's got some pretty heavy hitters in that documentary, Joe Mercola. Dr. Uh, Perlmutter is going to be in this one. So we shot footage for that um, a little earlier this year. My mm -hmm. background is in nutritional sciences and in biochemistry. And I was trained by Dr. Lawrence Wilson uh, in hair tissue mineral analysis interpretation. Many people would consider Dr. Wilson one of the leading authorities in the world on HTMA um, at this time. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that hair tissue mineral analysis is a very niche testing modality. Very. Wilson studied with Eck, did he not? Yes, Dr. Wilson basically uh, was trained directly by Dr. Paul Eck, who started all of this uh, hullabaloo yeah. uh, with hair tissue mineral analysis in the 70s. He started to really, uh, a lot of the principles that we'll talk about come from uh, a lot of Dr. Eck's insights from right. the 70s and 80s. Right. Okay, if you want to follow me, my ha my handle is StillmanMD everywhere. Substack, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Clark's are... Go ahead. Nutritional underscore analytics on Instagram. That's the main social media uh, vehicle that we've got up now. Um, I do sometimes use Facebook like a blog. Um, so there are some longer blog posts on that personal profile there. Um, you know, so sometimes Instagram cuts off the 
number of characters you can use. So that gets in the way of really uh, writing some more detailed posts that are on that I use Facebook for. So those yeah. two. And for people who've got questions in the comments, we will be responding to those later. We've got all this mapped out. So just bear with us. We will be answering mm -hmm. uh, your questions. Okay, so why minerals matter. So there's a reason that I'm on here today talking about minerals. So I'm 35 years old. I remember my first naturopathic mentor. I took him on when I was like, or he took me on, I guess, at 14 or 15. Spent the last 20 years really trying to figure out what really mattered. I've used vitamins in high doses and low doses. I've used minerals in high doses and low doses. I've used IV nutrition. I've used oral nutrition. I've tested blood levels. I've tested urine levels of different things. I've tested hair tissue mineral analysis. I've tested lots and lots and lots of things. I've had a really eclectic group of mentors all over the country. And I've concluded that if you are not fixing the mineral system underneath everything, you are going to get mediocre results and fleeting results. And if there's two characteristics that I want to describe the results I get for people who work with me, it's significant and durable, like a good truck. It's big and it's heavy and it is not going to break down mm -hmm. after, even if you run it through the mud and take it off road and all that. That's mm -hmm. how, I mean, most people who work with me want to be. Mm -hmm. So minerals are the bedrock of health. And on top of that, by the way, heavy metals are the fastest way to undermine and destroy that foundation of good health. If you actually look at the lethal dose of different toxins in nature required to kill an animal, such mm -hmm. as a person, the things that are most toxic are actually metals. Um, and if you look at how powerful minerals are, I mean, tiny, tiny, tiny quantities of minerals mm. can shift the needle on someone's health massively. Like you've only got 18 grams of, of, of magnesium in the average human body. You know, that could fit in like this little pill bottle. You mm. can fit almost in the palm of my hand, I think. Mm -hmm. If you look at like copper, it's something like 80 to 120 milligrams. Right. It's tiny. It's It fits easily in the palm of your hand. But mm -hmm. if those minerals are not in the body in the proper way, it's a disaster. It would be like imagine taking all of the screws out of your house and putting them in one corner of the garage. The house would collapse. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not just about having enough. It's about having them in the right place and sort of fastened, so to speak, in the right way. And exactly. one of the big problems with how we analyze things in medicine is that if you look at how we can test things, right, generally speaking, we have three, you know, arguably more, but there's three basic things that we can easily test hair, urine, blood, you can do saliva, you can do skin, there's lots of drawbacks, you can do like toenails and fingernails and whatever, but I'm going to stick to these three. The big problem with this is that the urine and the blood flux quickly. They change very rapidly. Mm -hmm. I've seen mercury levels as high as like 20 something or 30 something that are, you know, five or six within a matter of days um, in the blood, for example. And so you can't really trust that. The hair grows relatively slowly, but fast enough that it's a nice marker for two to three weeks of minerals. Mm -hmm. And it's also going to show you how things are being incorporated, not just well, into the external tissues of the body and what's being excreted from the body. And that makes it a much more interesting window into what's going on, not only in the blood, but in the gut, inside of your vital organs and inside of your body in general. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And the other thing that I would say about hair analysis that uh, some people are missing um, is that this test is a phenomenal way to test the tissue status of the elements over the long haul, like you mentioned, but it's also measuring the status of the whole mineral system, which is a newer sort of idea that Dr. Eck introduced and has been elaborated on in the literature a little more recently in human beings yeah. uh, uh, via this new field called ionomics. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really where the magic is in using the HTMA as an assessment tool is that we can assess the status of the whole mineral system. Right. All at one time. Right. Um, real quick, blood brain barrier, which is on this slide. Yes. Uh, that's it's BBB is blood brain barrier. Jennifer asked that question. I wanted to cover that before we move off this slide. Yes. Right. Yes, exactly. So go ahead. Yeah, I mean, where you were going is where I'm going. Normal blood levels do not equal optimal total levels in the body. And I really want to stress how important it is to understand that this is not just about having the right, you know, to go back to the screws analogy in your house, 
Mm. You know, if you put the right number of screws in your living room, it doesn't mean that they're going to hold the ceiling up. They have to be in the right place. They have to be put in the proper location, orientation. All this matters. And so people will chase blood levels and mm. they will be deceived thinking, oh, you know, your mag level is good. Your zinc level is good. Your God. copper level is good. And they will completely miss all of the benefit of changing nutrient loads in the diet, but then mm. also altering, um, you know, how we're just altering all kinds of other things that will inc- improve how these things are incorporated into the body. We're going to talk more about that later. Also incredibly important to know that uh, blood levels of minerals do not correlate with the tissue status of those elements right. at all. Right. And it's very important to know that like calcium, most of the calcium in your body is stored in bone. Most of the zinc in your body is stored in muscle, yes. uh, right? And so on and so forth. So using the hair test as a tissue test or biopsy test, we can correlate it much more efficiently or strongly to the tissue status in the body of the minerals versus like a blood test, which blood is simply a transport medium. We're really measuring uh, in the blood, you know, elements being moved from tissue site to tissue site, basically. Right. And so mineral deficiencies is just the beginning. It's the tip of the iceberg. Mineral balancing is actually the key to optimizing people. uh, And that's really what this is all about. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and to that point really quickly, um, you know, when we say mineral balancing, or we use the phrase like mineral system, this comes from the idea that minerals interact with each other. And, and there's not a lot of people on social media or even in the academic world that are elaborating on this idea or talking about where the idea comes from. Right. But it comes from a bunch of landmark papers in the early 70s by these two researchers, Hill and Matrone, who theorized that minerals and biological systems or elements in biological systems would interact if they had similar physiochemical characteristics like ionic radii, yes. orbitals, coordination numbers. And so if we look, you know, at the periodic table, uh, like copper, cadmium and zinc all have very similar uh, physiochemical characteristics, including uh, orbitals and coordination numbers. So mm-hmm. they, they did a lot of that research in the 70s and then at least they proposed the idea. But then there was follow up research to corroborate that. And that's really, uh, I would say, one of the most important principles or concepts of all of this, it's that these elements interact. Why do they interact? They interact for these reasons of similarities in chemical characteristics. And so that's really where that idea comes from um, and, and really why it's so important. Yeah. And so um, this is part of why the topic is so complex. Mm-hmm. Linus Pauling won the Nobel Prize in chemistry. He also won the Nobel Peace Prize. He said you can trace every sickness, every disease, and every ailment to a mineral deficiency. What he never got into in his research was really looking at how the other, um, how these elements really work together when patients are not actually acutely ill or don't have a chronic disease that's manifested. You can still be balancing people's minerals in order to get them further and further and further away from sickness and into better and better and better health. So like I was saying, you can't practice great medicine without great minerals. You can't get great results without mineral balancing. And I don't think people can really stay well when they don't keep their minerals in balance. And there's a ton of things in our modern world that are leading people to be imbalanced. So Mm -hmm. when I look at symptoms, because one thing that people are always looking to me for is, well, what's the diagnosis? We're going to talk about that more later. Mm. But when I look at what I see in people who've got severe mineral imbalances, they're tired, they have pain, they have anxiety, they have a lack of focus and clarity, they have headaches. Digestive pain. They have digestive issues. Yeah, I didn't put that on here. I can't believe I forgot that. They have metabolic syndrome and derangements. They're overweight. They have blood sugar problems. Um, and they may have, you know, d- they may end up with dementia. And that's really clear across the literature. You can look at so many papers on this and you'll see these links, but all those links are looking at, for the most part, are these people deficient? There's mm. more sophisticated papers that I've particularly been looking at right now in the context of copper, where they mm. show that the, the dementia brain has low levels of usable copper, but mm. the body may actually have copper elevation. And so people are having this argument back and forth in the literature. Well, is dementia a copper toxicity problem or is dementia a copper utilization problem? I think it's very clearly a utilization problem, which is why yes. you need the minerals to be balanced because copper depends on the other minerals in order to be properly used. 
yes. among other things. And on that point of copper yeah. really quickly, in Wilson's disease, uh, there is a massive buildup of copper in the biliary liver axis, but there is copper deficiency in the peripheral tissues. Yes. It is more complicated than simply, you know, right. is it low or is it high? You know, utilization matters quite a bit, and we'll we'll get into that as well a little later. Um, Jim asks if there's a link between autoimmune diseases and uh, like so just psoriasis and minerals, and the answer is a thousand a thousand percent yes. We're going to talk about that later. So uh, because minerals are pleiotropic, they are and pleiotropic means they do a lot of different things. Yes. They're vital for hormones production, regulation, detoxification, excretion neurotransmitters, protein synthesis, energy production within the cell, detoxification, healing, immunity, life in general. There's no function in the body. I remember in an inorganic chemistry class, which I can't believe now was almost 15 years ago. Actually, no, it's 17 years ago. I would have been 18 years old. It was my first semester in college. And my professor, Professor Zim, Zim, I don't even remember if I've got his name right. It's been a while. So he says, he says something like, we used to think that 15% of enzymes worked with, you know, minerals. And now we think it's more like 45%. He said, so if you extrapolate that, it, it, just wait 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, we're going to figure out that all of them work with minerals. So they're really important. Exactly. And enzymes are running or catalyzing biochemical reactions, you know. Yeah. So a lot of the history of biochemistry research is essentially the study of enzymes, basically, and how those... Uh, enzymes are really catalyzing and making reactions happen much more quickly. So it goes back to this pleiotropic concept of the minerals are used, you know, each individual mineral is sometimes used thousands and hundreds of different times. If we look at them individually, right. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, yeah there's just a, uh, it's a better question to ask, uh, what are the minerals not used for? That's an easier question to answer than exactly. what are they actually yeah. used for? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so the key to balancing minerals is understanding what controls minerals and then understanding how they interact and incomplete understanding arises from not understanding or, or comprehending both of these things. Mm -hmm. One of the really important principles that I always explain to people comes from Hippocrates, one of the, fa the father of medicine in the West. Illnesses do not come upon us out of the blue. They are developed from small daily sins against nature when enough sins of accumulated illnesses will suddenly appear. And you'll see this in the mineral world, because people will think, oh, it, it, you know, I'm eating a healthy diet. Well, what does that mean? Mm. Small shifts in how much you're eating, how many grams of salt you're having, how many grams of potassium, how many grams of calcium, magnesium, copper, zinc over time has an incredible effect on your overall mineral balance. And people yeah. don't understand this. The same thing's true with heavy metals, right? So you mm. think nothing perhaps of cooking with aluminum pans or cooking in aluminum foil or, you know, uh, having other aluminum exposures. And yet these are actually interfering with other minerals in the system that are trying to keep you healthy and well. And that's how people wind up with these big burdens of toxic metals mm -hmm. that you'll then see coming out on hair tissue mineral analyses uh, in very, very high quantities. Yes. And I would say that might be another one of the most important points that we make the entire yeah. uh, webinar here is that uh, it's slow. Uh, it's a slow burn when it comes to mineral imbalances and deficiencies. Yes. And the development of those occurs over time. But what's really phenomenal about the hair test is that it's a longer term type of test. So we can mm -hmm. kind of track those, uh, those deficiencies, those imbalances as they occur over time. You're right. not going to get something like that with a blood test. No way. I mean, unless you did like serial blood tests. I Every mean, single day for, you know, four months. I don't know who's going to do that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so what imbalances minerals in our modern world? There's a lot of causes. Depleted soils, hint, we use NPK fertilizer in this country and all over the world in order to make foods big and juicy and healthy because we all buy our food based on weight, which means the more water and cellulose they can pack into the plant, the right. better off their margin is going to be. And so they're not repleting the soils with zinc or copper or chromium or selenium or any of these other trace elements that are still vital to life. Processed foods, you often strip out the mineral dense portion, like the husk of rice or the, the germ of wheat, things like that. Mm -hmm. Psychological stress is profoundly imbalancing to minerals. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the real hidden things that people who say, well, I eat perfect or I eat this or I take supplements or whatever. Why am I still low? I'm like, look, you're a, as Jim likes to say, you're a stress monster. 
Mm -hmm. you love your stress or addicted to it. You got, you got to chill out and relax. Mm -hmm. Heavy metals interfere with normal physiology. They will compete with the other, with your nutritive minerals. As Clark was saying, Mm -hmm. physical stress, heat, cold, sound, vibration, light, any kind of physical stress, electromagnetic stress. So EMF, electrical magnetic fields, all these will have an effect on your mineral balance. And like I said before, it may be small and you may not think much of it, but over mm-hmm. time that compounds. Mm-hmm. Hormonal imbalances, as we're going to talk about later as well. And then just in general disconnection from nature, because if there's one principle I really believe, it's that nature gives us the energy and the frequency and the, the, um, the instruction for how to use minerals as well as other nutrients so that we actually utilize them properly. Yeah. And one big one I would add as well is sugar um, to this list. Sugar processed food category. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So how do minerals really work? So more is not always better as we've been talking about. Um, Real quick overview. They're absorbed in the body, by the body, in the gut. Um, Some people are going to say, well, what about my Epsom salt bath? What about my um, float tank with my Epsom salts? Am I not getting magnesium through the skin? No one has actually studied that properly as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And so I would actually like to do the study, but that's a story for another day. Mm -hmm. You lose minerals in your urine, your feces, and your sweat. Your body's going to excrete excess minerals and heavy metals in these three things, Mm -hmm. which is part of why having appropriate, you know, foods coming in with things like fiber, like fiber can really help you get rid of a lot of toxins and toxic metals. Mm -hmm. Um, being properly hydrated is key because your body's going to concentrate those toxic metals in the urine and sweat. And then things like sauna have a profound impact on this, which is why, you know, I went to the trouble of interviewing Brian Richards the other day on my YouTube channel, which you can go find if you put in like sauna, you, you know, it's Dr. Stillman, YouTube, whatever. Um, and so you'll see huge, huge, um, effects of detoxification protocols on people in part because you're getting rid of heavy metals and excess minerals. Now, they're also controlled by hormones. So if you look, and we'll talk more about this later, but if you look at levels of hormones, they'll control what minerals are being absorbed because basically the hormones are sending the body are the body's signals to the rest of the body of, okay, we need more of this. We need less of that. So excrete this and absorb that. And then they interact with vitamins, amino acids, fatty acids, carbohydrates, which is why you have to have a complex understanding and comprehensive understanding of how all these things are fitting together. Otherwise, you're just never going to get these minerals right. Right. Okay. Absorption principles. So the minerals and metals compete with one another. And so you're going to see toxic levels of metals go up in people whose mineral levels are down because Mm -hmm. the body can't tell the difference. And you're going to see people who eat more of the minerals they're low in actually detox a lot of the toxic metals and feel a lot better. One One thing I would love to say on this point is that there has been research looking at the mechanisms for how this actually occurs and there's one paper in particular that I think is really interesting to just note and mm-hmm. highlight right now. Uh, it's, it was a metalomics or ionomics study done yeah. on autistic kids. And they noted that in zinc and magnesium deficiency states, what happens is, is that certain of the absorptive molecules in the gut that are uh, re- you know, required to absorb and, and send out these minerals to their uh, tissue sites those are upregulated massively in zinc and like magnesium deficiency, right? Yeah. And so like one example is like zinc importer four, uh, which is upregulated in zinc deficiency. Um, what happens in, when you're exposed to the metals in this deficiency state is that those importers will absorb more of the metals because they can't, they actually can't distinguish in some ways. Right those uh the metals like cadmium and lead from zinc because of the characteristics that are so similar um like ionic radii orbitals and others right but they've looked at it and they've looked at the mechanisms so we know exactly what's going on there right so um gi illnesses interfere with absorption many of you are struggling with leaky gut SIBO, ibs ibd that alone will really derange your minerals And then mineral derangements can fuel those illnesses and impair your ability to recover from them. Vicious cycles. Vicious cycles. Yeah. Um, Acid lowering medications, very common, very commonly used. And also acid lowering foods, to be fair, like people who are, you know, consuming a ton of dairy, that's really hard for your body to break down. And so this can contribute to and and keep close company with people having mineral imbalances. Hmm. 
And then supplements like binders and clays. And I mean, there's so many things people are just throwing around without understanding how they may affect mineral balance. And I'm not going to tell you that I have definitive proof of this clay or that clay or this binder or that binder totally wrecking somebody's health. But mm. we really don't know well how they interfere this. And people are just basically blindly guessing. And so one of the things I've seen in my practice is someone will be doing something like really aggressively saunaing. And I look at their mineral levels and I say, look, you got to stop that because right. you don't have enough mineral density in your tissues to sustain the losses that you're enduring. Right. And so, yes, it's a good idea to do things for detoxification, whether, again, it's binders, minerals, clay, sauna, coffee enemas, whatever, you know, pick your poison, so to speak, pun intended. Um, but you, you can't just like randomly do this. Quantifying things is really important. Otherwise, you're going to get into trouble. Exactly. So losses, I can't stress this enough, pun intended. They're increased by stress. And so, so many people come to me and they're like, I don't understand why I've been taking supplements and this and that and the other thing. And, or particularly people have been working with me for a long time because they start to look at me like, Hey, why am I taking all these magnesium supplements you're telling me to take, but my magnesium levels are not increasing. And I say, look, hmm. you are a CEO who flies around the country all the time and has like four kids, you know, and your ex-wife is crazy. Like, what do you mean? Why do you not know why your minerals are, are low? Hmm. You know? It's the stress, hmm. you know, become a Buddhist monk and then you won't need magnesium supplements. So they're lost in sweat, urine, feces, cold heat sound. I mentioned all that before. And again, they're controlled by hormones, which is part of how that's mediated. Hmm. So just a couple of quick examples of how hormones control minerals. So mineralocorticoids is a complicated word for better, the better known um, cortisol and aldosterone. They help you retain sodium and dump potassium. Estrogen helps you retain copper, the higher a woman's estrogen level, whether it's coming from synthetic estrogens and birth control or estrogens from hormone replacement therapy or estrogens just from endogenous production, mm -hmm. the more copper she's going to have in her blood, whether or not it comes out in the hair every time. Um, testosterone increases iron absorption mm. because the higher your T, the more muscle you're going to have and the more iron you're going to need in order to fuel all that metabolism. Mm -hmm. um, vitamin D, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, they all regulate bone formation and breakdown mm -hmm. bones made out of minerals. And so you got to remember, you've got these giant, this giant sink of minerals in your bone mm -hmm. and the health of the, that bone is dependent upon these minerals and on the hormones, which is why we have such an epidemic of osteoporosis today. That's increasingly affecting both men and women. Yeah. And what I would say on that point, um, especially as it relates to estrogen, mm -hmm is that all of the heavy metals are estrogen mimics. Mm. So in the same way that metals can actually mimic your essential yes. elements. And you know, there's yes. a fancy term for that called ionic mimicry, but there's molecular mimicry, which basically is this idea that the metals can also uh, mimic endogenous biomolecules. Right. So, and then add to that, that a lot of our synthetic chemicals, like bisphenol A is the one that's gotten most press, but yeah. there's so many like it. They're right. also estrogen mimickers. So we really live in what we might describe as an estrogen dominant world where we're seeing more and more problems with low testosterone, low progesterone, high estrogen levels that may not be out of control, like super high levels of right. um, estrogen. Like they may be normal, but the ratios are way off. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Or there might just be, you know, what I see a lot is like 30 and 40 year olds who've got like subclinically low testosterone and they're like, I've done everything. I've taken all of the Tongat Ali that I can, yeah. you know, there's something deeper going on there. And I have a testosterone webinar that I just did with Jim Laird a month ago that people yes. want to learn more about that because it's a major, major problem that's being massively underdiagnosed. So minerals affect hormones. Zinc is required for hormone activation via protein translation. So if you don't have enough zinc, you can't make protein. It's a big problem. Mm -hmm. Magnesium is required for DNA manipulation in many, many different ways. If you don't have enough magnesium, you're not going to be able to protect your, your DNA. Insulin requires zinc to function. To make this a really, which is a very, very, very long story short, you need trace elements for the production of all of your hormones. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of the big problems in the anti-aging quite frankly, industry today, mm -hmm. lots and lots and lots of people are focused on the hormones and they'll give you testosterone and progesterone and estrogen and thyroid hormone. And they'll give you cortisol. And yes, there's safe and effective uses for all those things. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have total adrenal failure, you have Addisonian crisis. I've seen people basically dying from that and they have to take exogenous cortisol, mm -hmm. but people are basically propping up a mineral deficient body with more and more of a hormone. It's a little bit like 
you know, dealing with having your parking brake on by stepping on the gas pedal harder. Can you do it? Would you want to do it if someone was about to rear end you? Yes. Is mm -hmm. it an optimal solution for your life? <laughs> no. <laughs> so hormones and minerals, this interplay is very complex for the mm -hmm. record. And so you're going to hear lots of things out there like obesity and diabetes is all about this, or it's about low teen. It's about low this and high this. Well, it has way more to do in the end with both the hormones and the minerals. And so if you're just treating one, you're not going to get optimal results. Right, right. Exactly. And so if we just look at insulin, um, yeah. you know, there are at least seven minerals that are involved in the regulation of insulin, right? Mm. So like calcium and magnesium in the pancreas are used to signal the release and shutdown of the insulin signal in response to dietary carbohydrate. Right. Zinc extends the action of insulin. Chromium is used as a glucose tolerance factor. Selenium is an insulin mimic, right? So we can go on and on. That's just one hormone that all of these elements are really involved in, in yeah. signaling and, um, and, and that those processes. So, and to the skeptics out there, many of you are going to be thinking, yes, but then why isn't there more in the literature about this? Hmm. And the reason is simply that this is not a hot issue in the research world's agenda. So if you look at who sets the agenda for research, right. it's the big mucky mucks at places like the NIH. Right. And it's the big mucky mucks at, you know, big foundations and they're mostly focused on the disease and not the solution. Mm. And so we see a lot of wasted money in the research world that I think would be much more productively spent mm -hmm. if they actually bothered to research this stuff. Mm. This stuff's very niche. It's not going to make these big, big, big corporations that ultimately control systems like the NIH the money they want to make. Mm -hmm. uh, like if you look at how, I mean, I've seen magnesium drop people's insulin requirements by multiple units over the course of the day. I used to do this in the hospital. I'd have a diabetic and check the mag level every day, give them two to four grams of magnesium every single day, IV, so I knew they were getting it. And just boom, that insulin requirement would come down. And, you know, that's a huge problem for, you know, the pharmaceutical industrial complex. But yes, exactly. And, and you know, when it comes to hormones as well, like, you know, we did touch on this a couple minutes ago, but metals matter quite a bit. Yeah, they do. Not only not only in a general sense, but where metals deposit in the body. And this is a huge aspect of the metal toxicological literature, which is overlooked and no one really talks about the complexity mm -hmm. of it. But, but metals seem to have an affinity for the liver and the kidneys. Both of those organs are incredibly important for your hormones, your stress hormones, right? The liver, I mean, I could, you could go on forever. We could use the whole webinar to talk yeah. about the link between the liver and hormones, but Metals seem to preferentially bioaccumulate in those two organs because they are the two organs that are responsible for trying to eliminate them. They're sort of like the first line defense. Mm -hmm. So when metals build up, let's say in the kidneys or the adrenal glands, you are, you are setting yourself up for hormonal imbalances, which are going to be next to impossible to fix by taking, yep. you know, exogenous hormones. Or uh, what's even more, if the metals get deposited into the brain in certain brain regions, uh, either the hypothalamus, the tumor. Over. Yeah, it's game over. And okay. not only are the metals affecting neurotransmitters at that point, but they're affecting the signaling mechanisms that start in your brain for all of those hormones. Right. And this is one of the things that's, I think, increasingly, I see that the, the veteran community is aware of the problem of toxicity in their environment, causing a lot of their problems. Mm -hmm. Things like concussions and micro concussions get blamed for a lot of the TBI amongst veterans. But a lot of these men and women are hanging on to a lot of toxins that have deposited in their brain. And, you know, you start giving these people protocols that balance their minerals and they start feeling a lot better because of this. Mm -hmm. And one of the, yeah, we could go on and on. I won't belabor the point. The other thing that I want people to know about minerals is that they work synergistically with vitamins. Mm -hmm. And this is super important because most people don't understand these relationships and changing your vitamin status will affect your minerals, which is part of why people will see amazing results with vitamins alone that they can't always explain due to the action of the vitamin itself. Mm. So just a couple of quick examples. B1 works with magnesium. B6 works with zinc. B12 works with cobalt. It's actually incorporated into that mm. molecule. And then methylation requires, which is using all these B vitamins and, and more, requires both minerals and vitamins in these pathways. So people will often make the mistake of looking, oh, well, 
I've got, um, you know, methylation defect, therefore I need more of this vitamin. And I said, well, yeah, but what's your mineral status? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have the proper mineral balance, or if you've got a toxic mineral load, no amount of methylation equivalence is going to actually fix the underlying problem, particularly if it's the wrong form um, of the vitamin, which is another common problem and mistake that people make. Yes. And uh, all, all of the fat soluble vitamins are mineral synergists as well. Uh, yes, that's yes. And because, because yeah. And partly that's because of particularly with vitamin D it's action as a hormone, right? Where it's regulating calcium, uh, calcium homeostasis and bone production. So uh, again, replacement does not equal balance. So many people fall into the trap of thinking the level is low. We must give the thing. And mm. that, really works well for a lot of people in a superficial way. You mm -hmm. give somebody with a magnesium serum level of 1.6, 1.8 magnesium, and they're going to think you hung the moon, but you give that to somebody who's got a level that's two, 2.2, 2.3, they may not even notice it. Mm -hmm. And you may make no real impact on their health and well being. Mm -hmm. And the people who came in with a low level, if you don't fix the underlying problems, which, you know, I mentioned before, they're going to keep coming back. I'll just be honest with you all. That creates a terrific, terrific revenue stream for a lot of people. Because right. if you're dealing with people who just never fix the underlying health problem that they actually have, that's causing them to lose minerals, like a buck, like a leaky bucket loses water. Mm. You just sell them supplements every single day for the rest of their life. And they, you know, they sort of wonder, well, why do I need so much magnesium? It's more than just your load coming in mm. it's about everything else in your life and it's also about these interactions because if mm. and i've seen this many times people will not realize that they have a big exposure to a toxic element that they didn't, didn't weren't aware of they may not realize that they had a big exposure to or intake of a nutrient element that was competing with that and this just leaves them wondering why they're sick and broken yes and i would also say on this point that it's very important to note that Yes, uh, if you have a really bad overt deficiency state, you know, and you're extremely anemic and you need iron or yeah. and you have, you know, and you have no iodine, you know, you can you can bolus those elements over sure. a short period of time. But with mineral balancing, really what we're talking about is optimizing the system status of the minerals slowly over time. And this is really uh, this achieves optima. Right. Mm -hmm. When we talk about, you know, um, optimizing blood levels of magnesium or whatever, that's not necessarily reflecting again, tissue status and therefore optimal function. You're avoiding an overt deficiency state by looking at those blood panels. But, you know, when it comes to the hair analysis and the mineral balancing, we're talking about really another level of health that you can achieve by, yeah. by achieving the mineral balance in the tissues. Absolutely. All right. So one of the big questions that, that I anticipate from people is, but will it work for me? Many people who come to come to my, my blog, look for my help. You've already been through a lot of the things. You tried the detox, you tried the sauna, you tried this diet, that diet, this other diet, this other protocol, this other protocol. You have like this long resume of doctors you've already seen when you come to see me. And I know a lot of them. So anyway, um, I want to run you guys through a lot of what I see happening with associations with actual problems, like real medical problems. I'm not mm -hmm. going to dive into like papers because honestly, every single one of these topics could be its own hour and a half long presentation. But so I'm just going to give you an overview. And if you want to go read more about it, knock yourself out. PubMed, Google Scholar will give you more information than you can possibly digest. Okay. So first of all, people often coming to me have, a history of some kind of chronic infectious illness. They're dealing with recurrent shingles infections, other zoster virus infections like um, uh, cold sores. They're dealing with things like, you know, chronic Lyme disease or, you know, insert chronic infectious illness here. Or maybe they, they're worried about acute diseases and they want to optimize their health and they don't want to die like Uncle Joe did of pneumonia. Mm -hmm. So one of the key things here to understand is that your terrain trumps the germs that you're exposed to. Mm -hmm. This over and over and over again is, is seen it's Pasteur versus Beauchamp. It's guys like, you know, um, Dr. Kaufman and Dr. Cowan, you know, versus the experts who are too legion to mention to even begin to cover on the other side, the terrain of your body, what minerals are in it, what metals are in it, what vitamins are in it, the energy, light, sound, 
the EMF you're exposed to, all of that is going to trump what you're exposed to in general. I'm not saying that you can't, as a healthy person, go out and get horribly, horribly sick or even pass away from something like food poisoning. Mm -hmm. But the key here is that you're going to minimize your burden of infectious disease by optimizing your overall health. And everyone who comes to me who's ever come to me with a chronic infection that they're worried about, every single one of them had an absolutely trash diet, lifestyle, mm -hmm. mindset, or both, or mm -hmm. all three, I should say. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what's driving that. And, and I would say, yeah. I would add one thing to this. The, mm -hmm. the mineral system, I wouldn't say it's the entire terrain, but it's a huge part of it. The mineral system is the terrain. Mm -hmm. We can actually use the hair test to put specific parameters around that terrain. A lot of people talk about that sort of vaguely, like improve the terrain. Like, you know, what does that actually mean? It, yeah, We're I know. doing very yeah. specific things to balance the terrain. Well, and I that's think a I big mean. part of that mm -hmm. is the density. Mm -hmm. And people just don't get how much the mineral density mm -hmm. of food has been diminished. Right. While the caloric density is not that different. Right. And so you have this big mismatch, in my opinion, between the amount of caloric content coming in and mm -hmm. the amount of mineral en energy or minerals coming in, as well as the vitamins, which it's just, it's so hard to talk about minerals without talking about vitamins. They work together. Mm -hmm. You can't work, have one working without the other. And the minerals and the vitamins are almost always in the same part of the food. Like the rice mm -hmm. husk is rich in B vitamins and minerals, not one or the other. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, minerals, minerals are it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they're not all of it, which I mean, we'll cover in the course in more detail because we'll add some caveats in here because a lot of people right. get that stuff wrong, but it's more than we can cover today. Right. Um, and then last thing I want to mention is heavy metals keep a very close company with chronic infections. Mm. Um, just over and over and over again, you'll see this in the literature. Mm. Um, and so, I mean, what, you know, what is that? That's metals are phenomenal at initiating reactive oxygen species or inflammation. Right. And a lot of your antioxidant enzymes, uh, you know, required to battle those metals are mineral dependent. And right. those minerals are also used in the immune system. So uh, very, very important to tie those two things together. Uh, whenever I see mineral imbalances, especially like a low sodium potassium ratio on a hair test, it's a, it's always a biomarker for low immune status every time. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, let's see, yeah, heavy metals. I really want to, you know, stress how dangerous heavy metals are. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, if you look at the toxicity of these, these, these things, even very small quantities, can be fatal. You know, there's stories out there of, of researchers who are dealing with very toxic heavy metals, having exposures of just a few drops on their skin and then dying, you know, hours or days later. Yeah, I know. On that, on that point, it's sort of insane. Uh, there's a researcher that I know out of Mercer University. She studies uh, mercury toxicity and cadmium toxicity in kidneys. Yeah. They have to use a very specific form of cadmium because other forms are so lethal. And the risk of exposure, even if you're really like trained in the laboratory setting you you can die you can die really quickly just from a very small exposure yeah it's it's pretty scary stuff yeah. um and, and one of the great things about hair tissue mineral analysis it's, it's one of the only tests where i can get all of them in something approaching a reliable number and i want to really be clear with people if you've had one of these tests done and you saw low low levels i want you to understand two things number one I find the levels to be somewhat misleading on the tests because the levels are the way that the, the scale is set up. They may look like they're low on the scale, mm. but if you're exceeding the top level on the scale, you are wildly, wildly overloaded and you're pushing tons of that stuff out. Mm -hmm. And you'll also see people have normal levels and then they'll have massive elevations later Mm -hmm. These things are hiding out in your body. It's not just a simple matter of coffee enema, sauna, mm -hmm. all done, right? It can take months and years to actually get this right, which is another thing we're going to cover in the course. When we And using the hair tissue mineral analysis as an assessment tool for toxic metals, it's, I think, in my opinion, the single best test to measure them. However, you have to know how to measure them. And there's some novel and unique ways that we can yeah. use the test mm -hmm. to measure them. Obviously, an over uh, uh, high level of a metal is, is indicative of a high body burden. 
but there's other interesting uh, parameters that we can use on the test, specifically mineral ratios we can use as biomarkers for toxicity of these elements because it goes back to this idea that the metals and the minerals have similar physiochemical characteristics. Right. And like, uh, as an example, aluminum can substitute for calcium, magnesium, iron, and silicon in the body because of this concept of ionic mimicry. Mm -hmm. And so imbalances in the mineral ratios are oftentimes very good biomarkers for toxicity of the metals, even if they are low or they don't really show up in current on that first yeah. test. Yeah. All right. As I was saying before, all immunological problems, recurrent viral infections, let alone bacteria, fungi, whatever, autoimmunity, allergy, and cancer, all these have to do with minerals, metals, and immunity. If you look up in the literature, the association between toxic metal burden, toxic metal exposure, and all these illnesses, mm -hmm. and also nutrient deficiencies of minerals as well as vitamins, you're going to see it in spades. I mean, there's no question in my mind that this is a really important component of optimizing our uh, immune function, our regenerative potential, you know, our bodies in general. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So cardiovascular disease, ridiculously strongly associated with mineral deficiency. I mean, this isn't even some kind of, you know, a lot of the times in the integrative and, and holistic wellness world that, you know, Clark and I live in, it's kind of like the world, according to whatever expert has just come out with a book on the topic. Right. I mean, even the cardiology literature is very clear. There's lots and lots of trends in cardiovascular disease, exposure to toxic metals, lack of nutrient minerals, in nutritional imbalances that affect how minerals are metabolized, it's all there. Mm -hmm. um, minerals and organ health. So a lot of people coming to me have problems with their liver, their gut, their mind in particular, mental health problems, heart and blood vessels, as I mentioned before, their hormones, their glands, all these things are imbalanced. I've seen really great results in all of these elements of my practice or all these areas of my practice when I fixed mineral levels. And that's why I then started to look more and more and more into hair tissue mineral analysis. It seemed like that was giving me the most pound for pound therapeutic value compared to using high doses of vitamins or, you know, all the other things that are in my you know toolbox as an MD. And one thing I would say about gut health, uh, yeah. which I do want to mention, and we do have a, a, a couple of hours that we did on, or that we're going to do on gut health in the course. Yeah. But in, in my opinion, really leaky gut and a lot of these uh, issues with gut dysbiosis, Crohn's, uh, you know, and all of the different names for these digestive disorders, it's really caused by mineral imbalances and heavy metals. And it, we can kind of tie it to in the small intestinal enterocyte cells, right? This goes back to uh, wh what is digestion using in the first place to accomplish everything that it needs to? Um, calcium is used to maintain the structural integrity of the small intestinal enterocyte cells. And mm -hmm. if we go back to, okay, this idea of ionic mimicry, many different metals can substitute directly on those small intestinal enterocytes for calcium and initiate massive amounts of inflammation directly in those cells and causing really what we know of as leaky gut. You know, so there's a lot of gut healing protocols out there uh, that most of them are very similar where you're taking a lot of glutamine uh -huh. or you're taking a lot of like marshmallow or, yeah. uh, you know, bone broth probiotics. And that's, I'm not saying that that's bad necessarily, but I went down that road. I did, I was on the GAPS diet for, you know, my own digestive issues and sensitivities to gluten and dairy and nothing was touched. Uh, those, those, that condition or my food sensitivities didn't improve until I eliminated a lot of metals and balanced my minerals. I went through a huge lead elimination myself on this mineral balancing protocol and I was able to eat gluten and dairy again after, um, you know, after eliminating that metal. Yeah. Um, do you want to share more about how you got into this? Cause I realized we planned on talking about that. Right. Yeah, I would love to. Um, I, I got into this, uh, my background is in nutritional sciences and biochemistry. So I went to school for those things. Um, but I got into this, obviously, like a lot of us do in the alternative health space because of my own health issues. Um, and those started in my early 20s. Um, I'm 38 now. But, um, you know, so I, I really started to have a bunch of issues with anxiety and mental health in my early 20s. And I ended up on medications for anxiety and depression, a benzodiazepine and an SSRI. And I went on like this half a decade 
long search for how to come off of those medications after I was on them and, and really looking for the root cause of my issues, um, you know, because it wasn't good enough for me to just be on these medications for the rest of my life. Um, not only because they stopped working after a certain point, but a lot of them uh, have their own really horrific side effects, right? I was gaining weight. My blood sugar was out of control. My thyroid lab markers were um, really out of control as well. Are you a train wreck? A, a total train wreck. <laughs> you know, that's like putting it lightly, you know? And so- you know cases you walk into the, into the doctor's lounge and like, oh man, this guy's a train wreck. That's exactly, that was me, you know, all those years ago. Yeah. And so um, I found this approach after I came off of those medications, which, you know, I had to be medically supervised to come off those medications, especially the benzo is extremely dangerous to come off of. So um, I found this mineral balancing approach using hair tissue mineral analysis. And um, at the time that I found it, I was on like 50 different supplements. I had tried and been to probably 20 different doctors, including holistic and naturopathic doctors. Yeah. And um, this was really the only thing that worked uh, to deal with not only the post acute effects of the medications that I was that I had come off of, but to really deal with the underlying anxiety um, and depression that I had developed, you know, over the years. So this program worked phenomenally for me. I lost 70 pounds. I eliminated a ton of metals. Thyroid values came into balance. Blood sugar came into balance. Um, it was definitely a, a, a longer road to hoe for me. Uh, but it really, it worked better than anything I had ever tried before. But I think one of the things you just said there is very important for people to understand. Mm -hmm. They're looking for a one hit wonder in right. their medical care. I have leaky gut. I just need to find the right concierge, functional, integrative, natural, holistic, medical doctor, health coach, consultant, fitness guru, whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're going to give me a combination of things and in three to six months, I'm going to be better. And we're going to target the leaky gut, right? Or we're going to target the thyroid, you know, that it doesn't really work that way. Yeah, no, it does not. And I see it failing over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people base their therapeutic, I'm going to be frank, their business model on failure, you know, because if the patient's always coming back to you every three to four months, planned obsolescence, you never run out of patients and you don't have to get any new ones. And this makes people way more independent. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny, you know, when someone has ghosted me as a patient, I either know that they're so well, they're too busy being happy and successful and healthy to like come back to me for more mm -hmm. or something happened where they fell off the wagon and they bailed on the protocol because mm -hmm. I never really run out of stuff to do with people. It's that they think, oh, well, I tried it for three or four months and it didn't completely and totally change my life. Mm. You can't have that mindset. If you're going to come into this, it's not going to work well. It, I mean, some of you will get unbelievably good results in like weeks, Quickly. days, you'll see an immediate response. But for many people, it's way more of an up and down. And because when metals come out of you, it's horrible, you know, and that's one reason why people say things like, well, I want to get better faster. Can I do more? Can I do more sonic? Can I take more zinc? Can I take more of this? Can I do more of that? And I say, look, you don't want to find out what you're like right. when your serum mercury level is 23 right. or what you're like when your hair tissue aluminum is 132 milligram percent. Right. You know, we've seen some pretty profoundly deranged and you can't take back some of the things you'll say to friends and family when you're altered by a detoxification reaction. Right. They may hold them against you for the rest of your life. So right. don't ask us to push your car harder than we think you should. Right. Exactly. All right. So another great thing about HTMA is that it's one of the cheapest tests out there in the functional medicine world. Like I have allergy tests that run up to a thousand dollars and they're amazing and they're wonderful. And I love doing them when it's possible, mm -hmm. but they'll spoil if they get there too late, you have to go in for a blood draw. Then the test is hundreds of dollars. HTMA testing is a hundred bucks. I can ship it anywhere in the world. Multiple people have asked, if it's going to be available in Germany or whatever, if you're in Germany or Bali or I don't care where, if you're cool with covering the shipping costs to and from you, we can work with you and help you in this course. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know what the shipping costs are, so we can't cover them without knowing that first. Right. Um, and again, the hair tissue mineral analysis, the great thing about it is it's extremely comprehensive. Like I, mm -hmm. I still like measuring metals 
in the blood. But if I'm looking at a blood panel of minerals, I can easily run it up to a hundred dollars or $200 and I'm not checking, checking all the minerals. Right. And then you have problems with repeatability. Am I actually getting an accurate measurement of the mineral in the blood? Because there's a lot of day-to-day -day variation, as we've talked about, but there's actually test-to-test -test variation, right. which is another big problem. Could, and yeah, so yeah. this is a much more reliable test because it's working with two to three weeks of tissue that's external to the body and so on and so forth. And then it also gives us a window into how vitamins and hormones are modulating mineral levels. And so you can get clues, okay, this person needs more of these vitamins, this person has a hormonal problem with this hormone axis. And that helps you understand how to a tailor their diet to them and then B come up with a better supplement protocol. Anything you want to add to that Clark? Um, yeah, I would say with blood testing, uh, sort of what you were talking about or, um, hinting at there is that, um, your last meal can affect blood markers dramatically, you know, so Profoundly. the hair test is also extraordinarily stable. The hair, as a, a, as a tissue, um, the yeah. very first research that was done on hair analysis was looking at um, Napoleon's hair, which they- Get out. 100% on God. Get <laughs> out. They looked at, you know, uh, a hair sample from hundreds of years ago, and they, they determined that he was potentially poisoned by arsenic. Um, you know, so it's, people ask me, well, is the hair sample going to last through the mail? And I'm like, it's going to be fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I tell them that story. That's great. I love that. Okay. The other thing I like about HTMA and mineral balancing in general is I think it's easy compared to a lot of the other things people are doing. I mean, when I see some of the supplement list people, I mean, I know, I know we're in trouble when somebody doesn't send me a supplement like list, they send me an Excel spreadsheet. Right. <laughs> so yeah. I keep my protocols really simple. And I can teach most of my patients how to do most of it with food. There's different opinions on this. Clark and I have not actually had a chance to, to like talk about this and where we may differ and disagree, but that's part of why we decided to create the course. Mm. We wanted to give you guys more because one of the reasons why people will put you on more supplements is either they think you don't hear them or they know that even if you do hear them, you'll misinterpret them. Mm -hmm. So somebody might say something like, and I'll say this frequently, like you don't need to take a fish oil supplement if you eat enough fish, but then you go out and you eat shark and king king mackerel and halibut and swordfish and tuna, and then you have a mercury level of 14 and you're asking me why you have ringing in your ears and headaches and depression. Mm. And I say it's your carnivorous fish habit. So um, you, there's caveats to all this that we, I really like to teach people. And that's what we're going to cover partly in the course. So I found that, you know, when I look at HTMA, I'm, I'm under five different um, supplements, mm. uh, depending on the case. And if someone really says, no, I really just want to keep eating whatever I'm eating, please just give me as many pills as I need. Okay, we may need to double that or whatever, but mm -hmm. we, can, we can keep it pretty simple compared to what a lot of people are on. 100%. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm usually not putting people on any more than like eight or 10 supplements Yeah. Um, at the most. And, and as you know, like there are people coming to us who are on 20 or 30 or 50 different supplements. And there's, you know, the supplements and the, and the minerals and vitamins they interact with each other just like drugs do. So if you're yeah. not understanding how they, yeah. um, how they interact, you're, you're potentially taking stuff that could create new imbalances. That's, that's really what I think is also another very important point about HTMA. We can very strategically tell you what to take and over what period of time. Yes. The dosing is very specific. Um, you know, but there's a lot of people out there who are taking supplements for X condition. Let's say, zinc is very popular to use against COVID and for a good reason, right? Zinc is very important to inhibit viral replication in the cell. Right. It's good for immunity in and general. You can't say COVID on this channel, Clark. They, they punish us in the algorithm. I'm just kidding. I don't <laughs> know if they do that, but if, like, you, wow, like, if yeah. you like what we're doing, we want you to know that they like to suppress us. So mm -hmm. hit the like, hit the share, whatever other buttons are on, whatever other channel yes. you're watching this on. Send it to somebody you like who needs the information. We appreciate that because um, we can see this in the algorithm. It's so powerful what they're doing to elevate certain voices and then punish others. Right. So anyway, so, so. Um, Microglow asks, will you cover anything about using HTMA plus blood work markers together? Yes, I will be adding. So for the record, I partly got into this because I started to do blood, blood tests and hair tests. And I started to realize that I was A, missing things with the blood. 
Mm. B, the blood testing was becoming prohibitively expensive for a lot of people who wanted to work with me. Mm. You know, when, to go back to the expense piece of this, let's say you do four hair tissue mineral analyses in a year, which is as many as I would recommend in general. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest with you between birthdays and anniversaries and, you know, unanticipated family emergencies and vacations and you getting better. So you stop focusing on your health so much and you get on with living your life. Most of you are probably going to do three in a year, even if you're aggressive. Right. And so three or four hair tissue mineral analyses, the testing cost alone, it's a hundred bucks every time, 300, 400 bucks a year. Compare that to something like say what I would call the, the, the most comprehensive functional medicine lab that I run in my practice, which might be something like the NutriVal Plasma. Mm -hmm. That right now I think is like 450 or for something like that, even the wholesale price to the clinicians. And we have to then often add a, a, a cost to cover the blood draw or cover the staff that we need to have order the test for you and you know, deal with problems if there's a deliverability issue or whatever. So, you know, multiply that by four, you're looking at $1,200, $1,500, $2,000, particularly those of you who are on a budget or wondering, how can I fix myself in this complicated, wacky, wild, wonderful world where, you know, you know, the best paid jobs are also the most dangerous and toxic. Well, pound for pound, this is a better test than anything else you can get out there. No. And honestly, it gives me more therapeutic value. And I want to be very clear. It's more therapeutic value in the hands of someone who knows how to interpret exactly. it, because this is also one of the most complicated tests with the most ins, the most outs mm -hmm. and the most perils and pitfalls mm -hmm. of any other test I'll run. Mm -hmm. And that's again, part of why we wanted to do the course together is yeah. that I've run at this point, probably at least a hundred blood panels within a week or two of HTMA tests. Mm. And so I can tell you, and I'm not the first person to do this. Plenty of other people have done it, but not a lot of people have written about it or talked about it publicly. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you the discrepancies you're going to see between blood markers and HTMA that led me to eventually say, okay, I don't need to get as many blood markers as I was. I can rely more on the hair. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, like I said, we're going to, we're going to talk about food. Um, objections that I often hear to this. So people often say, yes, Dr. Stillman, that sounds great, but um, I think my real problem is hormones. I hope we've made it abundantly clear that anyone who's got a hormonal problem owes it to themselves to check their mineral status. Right. Because even if you just do super simple, oh, like your zinc level is only 65, your magnesium level is only 1.8, you'll get really mm -hmm. much better results with any kind of hormonal problem. I don't care if it's PCOS or perimenstrual migraines or whatever, you're going to feel better if you get these minerals sorted out. And hair, hair tissue mineral analysis, you know, I think is, is critical in these cases. Mm -hmm. Another objection, people will, there's a lot of people out there. I don't know if this has always been the case or if it's just becoming worse, but people will say, well, you just need to eat more of this. You just need to eat more of that. You all need to take this. You all need to take that. Mm -hmm. This is a very, very ham fisted approach to this that I see getting a lot of people into trouble for two big reasons. One, mm -hmm. to go back to the analogy of it's not about how much you've got. It's about how your body's using it. People will start pushing copper into a system where their serum level is already 130, 150, 180. I've seen levels over 200 in the blood, which is double mm -hmm. what normal is. And these people may have a low tissue level in their copper, mm -hmm. right? And they may have low ceruloplasmin levels. They may not be able to use any of this copper. Mm -hmm. And yet they're pushing it into the system. This doesn't make any sense. And it always makes them worse. And that's one reason why you'll look at things like um, there's a great book called Why Am I Always So Tired about how putting particularly women on a low copper diet will often fix a lot of their problems. And if you look at the diet that many women gravitate towards in our modern world that they're told is healthy, it is a high copper, low zinc diet. And so they wind up with high copper levels and super low zinc levels. And this is part of where, you know, a lot of people and some people watching this may know that a, a, some time ago, maybe five or six, you know, three or four years now maybe less than that. I was taking Morley Robbins's course on the root cause protocol and hair tissue mineral analysis. Mm -hmm. And this, the level of understanding of how to interpret this test it, it, that we're going to cover is far beyond what he covers in his course mm -hmm. and his approach of just telling everyone they need more copper and they're all copper deficient. Many people are tissue deficient in copper, mm -hmm. but what they really need is actually way, way, way more zinc so that it will balance that copper and they'll detox heavy metals and they'll bring the system back into balance. And this is one thing that will really warp people's minds. 
Mm. You may have someone who, uh, Jennifer, that was a uh, Morley Robbins. Um, you may have someone who for, for three or four months needs more zinc because they've got copper toxicity and they're, and they're getting rid of copper or they need to get rid of copper. And then later on months, years later, they actually need more copper. Right. So this whole idea of you all are just the same and you all just need to follow this diet or this protocol or whatever, it's totally bananas. And yeah. the more you work with people one-on-one, -on -one, the more you're going to find an exception to every rule you ever think you ever had. And yeah. Jim and I were just talking about this this morning because I'm constantly asking him, will you come out with a, this program for these people or this program for that people? And he kind of looks at me and he's like, what I do is so tailored to the individual. For the record, we have a, a coaching program with Jim where you get monthly physical strength and conditioning training called Fund Foundation or Fundamentals of Wellness. And if you want more information on that, you can contact us and we'll let you know what it includes. Um, I don't want to get too sidetracked on that, but it's a really incredible experience of working with Jim that I'm going to get, get to talking about in my podcast with him probably later next month. Anything you want to add to that, Clark, or did I do that justice? No, you did it justice, but I, I would say, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, someone like Morley and maybe some other people, you know, they're really, they're missing the forest for the trees. Morley is focusing in on three elements, right? You know, magnesium, iron, and copper. And that to him is the entire game, but there's 21 essential elements, Right. And there's the toxic metals influencing those essential elements. And so um, one and good luck fixing someone with a chromium deficiency with with that. Exactly. You're not going to influence chromium, selenium, iodine, right, calcium, uh, you know, sodium, potassium. It's like it is sort of a, a little weird yeah. uh, to just focus in on an individual element or even just three elements. Really, what this is about is understanding the whole system. Yeah. Uh, and all of the interactions. He's hinting at some things that are correct, like you need copper for iron utilization, but there, it, it's a much deeper game because all these elements are interacting with each other at all the time. At all deeper time. game is such a great way of putting it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, okay, another common objection. I've already done a lot of detox. I'm sure I don't have any more heavy metals. These things get socked away in your tissue mm -hmm. like you wouldn't believe. And the body's doing that because it's really, it's really, you cannot tolerate high levels of these minerals in the blood, mm. toxic minerals, toxic metals, I should say, or high levels of minerals. Like for, so you, so you guys know, I taught, we talked about how like just drops of something like a, a very highly soluble mercury can kill someone in minutes, mm -hmm. practically speaking, hours, maybe a couple of days. Part of that is because it's going into the blood so fast mm -hmm. and destroying your blood chemistry. But you can accumulate huge quantities of these metals over time, but the body mm -hmm. will basically sock it away somewhere where it can't screw up vital physiology. And that's how you, you get chronic organ dysfunction. So like the kidney is a great example of this. You mentioned it earlier. Mm -hmm. We'll see people's kidneys failing in their thirties, their forties, their fifties, their sixties, very early in life when other people cruise right on into their hundreds with mm. essentially normal kidney function. Right. And one of the big differentiators is that toxic metal burden mm. and lack of minerals and nutrition. If there's any group of people that's loaded with toxic metals and massively demineralized with nutritive minerals, it's kidney disease patients. Right. And that's 100%. not just the world. According to Dr. Stillman, you go into this literature, you look at their mineral loads in their diet. They mm -hmm. eat more processed food than anybody else. They eat less healthy food than anybody else. They're baking in artificial light. They have terrible sleep, wake cycles. They, they live a very dysfunctional life. And then on top of that, a lot of the things they're using from aluminum underarm deodorant to, you know, um, uh, heavily like deep fried foods that are being fried in things that have been, been maybe, or maybe adulterated with hydrogenated oils. They're loaded with toxic metals. And so this idea that you can just do more sauna, take some clays, you know, drink some zeolite, stop. You got to give yep. yourself the minerals that are going to trigger the detoxification pathways to get rid of those heavy metals. And that's why you know, Clark, you've been doing this longer than me. Mm -hmm. How long would you say it typically takes to see all the waves of heavy metals come out of somebody's hair? Um, usually what I tell most clients is that it's going to take, especially for adults, 
it's going to take maybe two to three years to eliminate your entire toxic metal burden. Um, that can vary, certainly. But, you know, I think this is a really good opportunity to talk about how uniquely toxic heavy metals are. Mm. Uh, this is not something that people know about, but metals are replacing the minerals, right? We, we've, talk, we've talked about that quite a bit. We've beaten that to death, I think. But and, th and that's called ionic mimicry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But there's a th th the first phase of ionic mimicry is understanding how metals gain access to cellular compartments through mineral channels and transporters. But there's a second phase to ionic mimicry, wherein metals are actually substituting on enzymes and proteins for the minerals. And yeah. so there's a sort of a there's a there's an adaptive mechanism that the body is actually using to keep you alive. The metals are actually sort of adaptive in some sense in the short term and yeah. to go, you know, maybe do a, another car analogy. It's, it's almost like you're on the road and your fan belt breaks and you use the belt on your person to substitute for that fan belt to get to like the next town. That's the right. heavy metal replacing the factory part. And so you can get to the next town, right? But if you try to run the car with that improper part, to like, you know, across the country it's gonna end badly break down. It's going to, it's going to end badly. badly. So there's a, there's a couple other interesting facts about metals that people don't understand or know, which is that there's a latency effect to, or latency effects to the toxicity of the metals. So yeah. you can accumulate cadmium or mercury or other metals slowly over time, yes. but there's no symptomological presentation uh, or effects from that metal until maybe 10 years down the road. This is the biggest mistake that modern doctors, experts, influencers mm -hmm. really don't get in, in, in their thinking. And mm -hmm. it's not, you know, because they're not intelligent or whatever. It's just not enough people talk about it enough, mm -hmm. which is that the effect of a toxin, there's the acute effect and the toxidrome that we call it, mm -hmm. which is easy to figure out, right? You expose them to a bunch of it and they get this sick, right? In this way. That's not complicated. But what happens when toxins get stored in the body is they create local dysfunction of physiological biochemical pathways. They'll throw off maybe extra free radicals. They'll change local pH. They'll do all these different chemical things. I can't see that from up here. Just like a really great um, sailor is going to look at the weather and look at the water and look at all these things and say, oh, I know it's going to happen in two to three hours from now. Mm -hmm. Right. A really good clinician is trying to figure out not where are we right now, but where are we headed in two years, three years, five years, 10 years. Right. And so that's the real the real key to understanding. It's not about like Wayne Gretzky like to say, I'm not great because I skate to where the puck is. I'm great because I skate to where the puck's going to be. Mm -hmm. And that's the same idea here. And what's problematic with the way doctors view heavy metals is they say, oh, well, you know, so you ate some tuna, whatever your mercury level in your blood is fine. Well, the mercury that you absorbed from the tuna has gotten pushed away into some organ system. Mm -hmm. We're creating this gradual deterioration in physiological processes. Mm -hmm. And if we can just get rid of that mm -hmm. over time with mineral balancing, you're not going to have all that, all those problems from that. Yes. And exactly. It's the same principle with the organic compounds that we're dealing with these estrogen mimicking compounds, mm -hmm. pesticides, all the other compounds that you're going to see people talking about in the organic, natural, non-synthetic space, the same principles apply. Yes. And one thing I think is very important to know is that um, mineral balancing equals heavy metal detoxification. Yes. Yes. It's, uh, thank you for saying that. Yes. And that's be that goes to this idea of ionic mimicry. And what we're actually doing with mineral balancing is that we're sort of reverse engineering the entire set of mineral imbalances that allowed the metals to bioaccumulate. Right. In the first place. And we call this Herring's law because what you'll see is as people work through levels of their illness in reverse, the symptoms they'd gotten rid of from years ago will actually recur. It's very weird, mm -hmm. but you know you're on the right track when that actually happens because what the body is doing is it's getting back to a pre previous state and it's working through it. And that's really something that only people in the integrative and natural world talk about. Most people in the conventional world are like, oh, it's hooey or whatever, but you see it happening with people right. and they complain about it. And they're like, you made me better, but I'm worse in a way I used to be. So I, and then you have to explain like, yes, that means what we're doing is working. Right. I'm not like trading your headaches for your allergies that you used to have.
Right. And then once you get through those, once you get through that retracing, which is another way to phrase it, yes, you, you come through on the other side of that and you're on a right. new plateau, you know, yeah. and you feel incredible. Um, so yeah, the bottom line here is with the course, we really want to give you guys a solid foundation to understand what you need to know in order to balance your minerals, you know, basically now and, and forever. Um, I do want to mention, it's not just for practitioners. I think if you're a weekend warrior sort of I don't know if weekend warriors is even the right term. Like if you're looking for a, I want to come in and in an hour have Clark and Dr. Stillman fix my chronic health problem. This is not the program for you. Right. What we're going to be doing with the program. And to be clear, we have a program that you can sign up for Jim uh, dropped this in the comments earlier, earlier, uh, Jennifer, sorry, I'm responding to a comment. It's Herring H E R R I N G um, is Herring's law. I, I referenced earlier. So we're going to have a three month program, it combines six lectures that Clark and I have already recorded mm -hmm. on different elements of the body and their relationship to the mineral system, as well as metals. Mm -hmm. um, then we're going to ship you a hair tissue mineral analysis as a member of the course. You will send it in, get it back, and then you can bring it to our group calls and you can ask us questions about it. And we'll give you as much feedback and insight as, as possible. A lot of you are going to hear the same things from us. Some of you are going to have unique um, uh, unique issues or concerns that we'll, you know, cover for you individually. We're not practicing medicine. This is very much a coaching educational mm -hmm. paradigm, just so you guys are aware of that there's no doctor patient relationship. There's no prescriptions being prescribed. I may say, Hey, look, you know, you may want to get this checked or that checked that I can't be your doctor, at least if you're in a state where I'm not licensed. And if you do want me to be your doctor, you can go to the link below and there will be links to my annual plans our executive and concerts wellness services and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So um, again, it's a three month program. That's 12 weeks. There's going to be six webinars. One is going to be released to you weekly. We're going to have weekly calls with Clark and I, where we go over these time to be determined. We're going to make it accessible. If you're on the West coast, if you're on the East coast, I can't make any promises. If you live on the other side of the world right, right. Um, and one hair tissue test uh, shipped to you included in the price of the course. So the normal pricing, just so you guys know, the HTMA course, we're going to be um, retailing for $996. Group coaching with me is $250 per call usually. So that's a $3,000 value. An initial consult with Clark, which I think includes the HTMA Clark. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Is $599. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very blessed to have a lot of demand for what I do. So my executive physical is now between $1,500 and $3,000. dollars I think we actually may have raised that last week to $3,500, but don't quote me on that if you want to know you can find out through my executive counselors wellness services and that includes some lab work by the way but the point is this is normally really really expensive to have FaceTime with us to go over this and the only way we're able to do it is with the group coaching which is how we're going to do it so the normal pricing would be like three thirty nine ninety six. if you just wanted the course and the group coaching we're offering it to you for 996 today now that's open through monday night i really don't think you should wait that long we pre-release this basically and there's it's three payments of 332 so you don't have to pay all that up front by the way mm -hmm. um and so again that's like a three thousand dollar savings um but we can only take on 30 people for quality control reasons i'm sure you'll appreciate we've already sold 18 as of this recording which i was kind of surprised by i mean you know i'm not like complaining at all but it was i mean i just didn't think we'd get 18 before we even did the webinar yeah. Um, so we're really halfway to already being sold out with very, very, very little notification of uh, my email list and then Clark's uh, following on Instagram. So I encourage you to to really act on this quickly. Now, if we do sell out. Oh, and by the way, so the 10,000 people are going to get a copy of the replay through the email list that I have. Mm -hmm. So 30 is 0.3 percent of 10,000. So, again, time is of the essence. Right. Um, after we've sold out for this round. You can purchase the course. And if you purchase the course, we're going to extend the same offer to you later when we run the program again. Mm -hmm. We have the course available for a lower price. Jim is uh, Jim is backstage. If he can drop the price, we've got it on sale for now. Um, if you buy the course, you will get a discount on the coaching so that you're getting the whole package for $9.96, which is what we're running it for now. So you're not going to lose out uh, on the value, but you do need to buy the course now once we sell out um, in order to lock that in. Hmm. So, uh, again, we anticipate selling out for all we know, Clark and I are going to be emailing people in two weeks saying, Hey, we have another 15 people who want to go through this or another 30 people who want to go through this. 
So we're going to have this many group coaching calls. You can book a link. You can book here and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get you taken care of. So if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments. Um, I think that's all we have for people today. Thank you guys all for tuning in and listening. If you're watching this, by the way, in the future, it's you know July 29th, 2023 right now, um, there will be links below. Click on those links. You'll be able to access the course, purchase it. If coaching is available, we'll A, let you know through the newsletter that I run. Stillmanwellness.com is where you can sign up for that. Mm -hmm. um, so believe me, you're, you're going to be able to, to do this with us in the future again. Um, but make sure you're on the list and get the course now so that you A, lock in the current price and B, you have first dibs on the next, uh, what's him call it? Matthias. Yes. Yeah. So Matthias, Matthias, I think it's Matthias. It uh, yes. The HTMA test is internationally available. Mm -hmm. However, we ask that you foot the bill for the shipping because I don't know how much it costs to ship it around the world. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, somebody asked a great question earlier. Uh, Tracy Scott asks, if you're not able to absorb certain minerals, uh, then you have to balance minerals that helps with allowing the heavy metal to detox naturally. Am I understanding this properly? So Tracy, to word it a different way, minerals and metals compete with one another. Just like if I put nails and screws of the same size in the mm -hmm. same bucket, you would have to take a minute to be like, is this a screw or is this a nail with your hand, right? So you have to, just like you have to differentiate between these things, your body is trying to differentiate between minerals and metals. And mm -hmm. if I asked you to build a house and I didn't give you enough screws and I gave you nails and I forced you to finish it, what would you do? You would substitute nails for screws and the house would not be as good as if you'd use the screws where they were a better, uh, a better fit or fastener for uh, your problem. And so when you give the body back the minerals it needs, it pulls the metals out and discards them because it does want to do that naturally. And it can, mm -hmm. but it can't get rid of metals when it's trying to hang on to minerals because all these, I mean, all these port, um, porting systems that it has for pulling in minerals and pulling <coughs> out metals, the minerals and metals are close enough in structure that it really can't tell the difference in states of nutritional depletion. And uh, what I would add to this is that um, this is, I, I think it's a good uh, through way to ask this question. Yeah. How does the detoxification system actually work mm -hmm. uh, at rest? Right. And, and if we look at it, um, you know, detoxification is basically controlled by your antioxidant enzymes, your metal binding proteins, your hormones, and then like the liver and the kidneys and yes. the skin. And so when you balance your minerals, the, the antioxidant and enzymes, the hormones and the metal binding proteins are all mineral dependent. So you're upregulating mm -hmm. those, uh, those molecules massively by mineral balancing. And it, it, it actually is a way to improve your body's own detoxification systems at rest. So you don't need to take like, you know, chlorella or zeolites or, you know, do, you know, very harsh chelation protocols either. On that note, another question we have, what do you use? This is from Sharon. Uh, what do you use for heavy metal detox, real chelators or herbs? So Sharon, I will tell you that personally, I buy some kind of parsley, cilantro, organic, of course, when I go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And then I chop that up, put it in little Tupperwares, and I will sprinkle that on almost all my food over the course of the week because those herbs have some nice um, uh, detoxification qualities. As do many of our medicinal herbs, things like sage, thyme, oregano, a lot of those have positive effects on your body's ability to detox, as do some foods like, for example, grapefruit uh, upregulates certain detoxifying enzymes in the liver. Mm -hmm. But the problem with this is that it's not as simple as just we got to add some parsley and we got to add some cilantro. And we got like I've seen people who are adding lots of parsley and cilantro and eating, you know, this and that and the other thing and, and, and whatever have ridiculous levels of mineral to or metal toxicity. So it's not just a simple matter of pouring those into the system. And you got to remember that you only, I think personally, based on my experience and what I've seen in the literature, I think you can only get these heavy metals out of tissues where they've basically been stored away by the body to keep you safe from them mm -hmm. with the right minerals that will then help you pull them out. And so I'm really skeptical of anyone claiming that they're going to do great heavy metal detox without first understanding the mineral systems of the body. Um, and so I don't use IV chelators. 
I'm sure there's a place and a role for clays and zeolites and whatever, but you get a huge problem with these products because what is zeolite? Like if mm-hmm. I farm or whatever, mine zeolite in, you know, the glacial melting, I don't know, like the highlands of the Himalayas, it's not the same zeolite as if I get it from, I don't know, Utah. So which zeolite are we talking about? How is it prepared? Guys like Andrew Kaufman, I actually really respect what he's doing with his shilajit. He found somebody in you know the Rocky Mountains somewhere who actually gets the shilajit right off of the mountain rather than settling for some product that for all you know is, I don't know, really terribly contaminated with heavy metals from some terrible country with lots of pollution. Um, anything you want to add to that, Clark? Yeah, yeah. It sort of goes to the last point that I was talking about, which is that mineral balancing Mm -hmm. equals metal detoxification. That actually um, is the most powerful and important biohack for metal detoxification that exists. It's kind of a, you know, in the theory and it's a very conceptual topic, right? Right. Uh, But but it goes back to what do we use for metal detox? How do metals bioaccumulate in the first place? Through mineral channels and transporters via ionic mimicry. And so the mineral balancing is a tremendous buoy on the detoxification systems and directly antagonizes the metals in the tissues. Uh, yeah. That's really what mineral balancing is doing in the tissues. It's, it's actually causing metal detoxification much more powerfully than any sort of chelating agent or herb. If you, you know, if you wanted to use something on top of like the mineral balancing, the, I think the most important uh, biohack outside of the mineral balancing itself is the use of the near infrared sauna. Uh, the sauna is basically that Brian uh, Richards, Richards is, that sauna space. Yeah. Which again, sauna. I have a great interview with him on that on my channel. Yep. It's, it's, I see consistently massive results, not only when people are doing the mineral balancing, but when they integrate the use of that sauna every day, you know, and they do it strategically. Um, the, the metal detoxification that I see is just tremendous. What do you mean by strategically, Clark? Um, Well, there are certain mineral patterns uh, that you wouldn't want to overuse the sauna in. Um, Mm. You know, so if you're in like a four lows pattern or your sodium potassium are very low, that you don't want to do any more than 20 minutes, you know, generally speaking. And and in general, you know, you have to, you know, the caution principle, I think, is more important than anything else that we could ever talk about, um, especially when you're using sauna, because people's metal burden is so significant because of the mineral imbalances in the first place. So it adds to the level of importance of, you know, is your diet really nutrient dense? Is it mineral rich? You know, you're, you have to be on the right supplements. You have to be using sea salt very liberally to replace uh, any sort of losses that you may incur from using the sauna. So uh, it's not, this approach is really never about more is better, but using things and modalities strategically. Yeah, and I want to stress that one of the things we're going to cover in the course is so many people are looking for something that comes in a bottle, a bag, or a box that's going to fix them. Hmm. And yes, you need that in order to get well, and I mean, by and large. But if you're, as I've said before, not in the right environment, then nothing that comes in a bottle, bag, or box is going to actually fix you. Hmm. You know, if you're living in a terribly mold, uh, infested mold polluted home, you know, you got to get out of there. And if you can't get out of there, you got to ventilate it like crazy and try to remediate this toxic stuff that can really, really ruin your health. Mm-hmm. If you're living in an EMF disaster area next to like a power generator or substation or sleeping on the wrong side of the wall from the smart meter, or you sleep with your cell phone next to your bed, or you, your Wi-Fi router is close to your bed and you leave it on all night. I mean, over and over and over, like, I'll see people remediate that part of their life and you know we'll have done all this other stuff minerals and vitamins and herbs and supplements and blah 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 blah, and boom like we get like a 50 percent reduction in the severity of some kind of problem Mm. right and so you know using this as a modality that complements everything else that's relevant in the health and wellness space is really what we want to help people understand and that's where we're going to go with the course so yeah i think that's it's an hour and a half, Clark. We wanted to keep it under an hour, but we just can't stop talking about this. Stuff. <laughs> yeah. We hit it hard, though. We got it, I think. It's great. Yeah. So, again, if you're watching this in the future, you can sign up for the course. You can sign up for coaching if it's available on the links below. If you'd like to book the course now, 
act fast. We're going to sell out. We're really excited to run another cohort of this soon. Um, and we're looking forward to seeing uh, at least 30 of you on the, in the first round. So take care, everyone. Have a great day. Clark, any closing thoughts? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. I think we, we touch on everything I wanted to. Awesome. Get out, out, get outside, get some sunlight. It's good for your mineral balance and enjoy, enjoy this wonderful weekend, everyone.